bad bite. Mm. It helps us as police. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Maybe, hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you, uh, uh, Papa. You know Papa. Figuratively, <laughs> <laughs> he bites as hard as he can. <laughs> okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it could watch Donnie's bite. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hasbun Allah wa Neem al Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Wednesday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. Thank you to Sonar Fashions in Tamale for my outfit. 0246590162. 0246590162. You can get something special for yourself or for somebody near and dear to you. And I want to say a special thank you to uh, all the teachers, all the headmasters and headmistresses, the security supervisor, the PRO, uh, the Okanakwe Sub-Metro, the education unit. Yesterday we had a swell time at the St. Joseph, the Work Anglican Church. Um, it's actually the Accra Metro. And we had a, a swell time at the St. Joseph, the Work Anglican Church, Bishop 1 and 2, Kanishi Anglican, uh, JSS, and St. Joseph uh, School. We had a swell time, Global Hand Washing Day. <clears throat> and thanks to Cousins. Uh, uh, PZ and for, for bringing out your, this initiative and, and also for us as a corporate social responsibility. We taught the children how to wash their hands, how to maintain hygiene, especially now that cholera is knocking on our doors. It was important that we did it. So thank you. Thank you very well. The team led by Mrs. Appel and Madam R and all of you, thank you very much indeed for the opportunity. Now, yesterday I realized something that these days the children when they're going to school have very huge knapsacks their school bags it's so heavy why do they pack all the books they have in them are there no cupboards like the, the back in the day when we were in school we had a cupboard monitor who would keep uh, or a cupboard boy as they called it who would keep the books do they have to carry everything are we thinking about their cerebral column or the vertebrae column, sorry. Are we thinking about that? Are we thinking about their backbone? Are we thinking about anything that, that it could come back to affect them? So parents, I beg you, your children, they don't have to carry all the books they have in the world to school. The school has a timetable. Unless the school doesn't follow the timetable, but the school has a timetable. And the children are to come to school with specific books. Maybe one alternative reader or something so that when they have a free period, they can read on their own something. But to carry the entire gamut of books that they have and take it to school, no, no, no. I don't think it's good. And I see that just children all over the place doing that. And I ask myself, where are their parents? Is nobody watching? Does, doesn't anybody realize that these children are going to be hurt for the future? I beg you, let's take care of the future today. Because if it gets out of hand, I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure we want to have a whole generation where they are all working and they are working in San way. No, I don't want us to have that. So please, I beg you, parents, make it a duty and a responsibility to check the timetable and then put the books in there. Never mind that when they get to secondary school, I'm told that it, by the close of the, of the month, form ones are coming to school. And the same day the form, form ones who are there now finish writing their exam, even without marking, assessing what they have written, they go straight to form two. And they have just spent less than a month or so in school. I don't get it. The Ghana Police Service has also informed us that Prophet Elisha Salifu Amwaku and his wife have been picked up concerning the accident that happened at East Legon involving their son. Uh, who I'm told is a 16-year-old. So investigations are ongoing for those who have been asking on our pages. That's the latest update. Yesterday, I also got information from the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. You remember sometime in August, we were told that 30, 30 dialysis machines had been procured. Yesterday, when I checked, we were told that seven, seven of them have arrived, seven. 
And so far, they have used it, and I think two patients have experienced it so far. So we are still waiting for the other 23 that was promised Kolebu Teaching Hospital. And you know, I've been very passionate about this dialysis matter because I really, really, really think that we all have to be involved and we all have to speak up for ourselves. But the nurses are not happy. And they have written a strongly worded release. I'm talking about the 2020 batch of nurses. They make the argument that before 2017, there was only one batch of nurses outstanding. 2015 or 2016 batch of nurses, I, I don't know, but they said there was only one batch of nurses, nurses outstanding to be given financial clearance to be posted. But as we speak, nurses from 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, they are all waiting. So somebody asked the question, what is the essence of giving the people allowances and sometimes even delaying the allowances? And the nurses have been doing their own TikTok videos and asking questions that, are uh, you promised us allowances? Now, I mean, in the third year, I've not received a kubu, a peswa out of the allowances. So what is the essence of giving them allowances when we cannot give them jobs? So we part the schools, we put everybody in there, and when they finish, we can't give them. This is what they have written. 15th October, 2024, for immediate release, Graduate Unemployed Nurses and Midwives Association. And I thought that we were told that Unemployed Graduates Association was a thing of the past because of the multi multiple jobs that have been created. So these nurses, I'm sure that they, they will be telling lies then because those who have told us that there's no graduate unemployment. Now, let's read it together. Graduate Unemployed Nurses and Midwives Association expresses disappointment in government and the Ministry of Health. The leadership of Graduate Unemployed Nurses and Midwives Association wish, wishes to express a profound disappointment and frustration regarding the prolonged unemployment situation affecting our members. Despite our qualifications and dedication to the health sector, healthcare sector, the 2020 batch of graduate nurses and midwives have still not been posted. On 6 August 2024, the Ministry of Health opened the recruitment portal allowing us to apply for positions that have, we have eagerly awaited. The application window closed on August 23rd, yet two months later, we are still wait without any updates or communication regarding the outcome of our applications. Leadership has made several follow-ups to the ministry since the portal was closed, yet all promised timelines have passed without any results. The continued uncertainty about the status of our unemployment has led to increased anxiety and frustration among our members, many of whom are struggling to make ends meet. We call on the Ministry of Health to immediately deploy our members to their respective facilities so they can utilize the skills and knowledge they have worked hard to acquire. It is imperative that our concerns be addressed and that we receive clear communication regarding our applications and the next steps. Should our concerns remain unaddressed, we will be compelled to hold a three-day picketing at the Ministry of Health from October 23, that's my father's birthday, to the 25th. This action is necessary to bring attention to our plight and demand accountability from the Ministry of Health. We urge the government to recognize the valuable contributions that the graduate unemployed nurses and midwives can make to the healthcare system, especially during these challenging times. We hope for a swift resolution and an opportunity to serve our nation with the skills and passion we possess. Thank you. Dr. Bernard Okoboy, good morning to you. Dr. Anthony Nsiansari, Senior Advisor to the President on All Things Health, Good morning to you. Many people have even forgotten that you're still a part of government. You were the one who came to tell us that Agenda 111 will be completed by the close of this year. We're still monitoring. Maybe tomorrow we can do a throwback on Agenda 111. But these are the graduate nurses. They are not happy. They certainly are not happy. So what do we do to them? Should we allow them to also go out of the country like their colleagues have left? Because pharmacists have left. Anesthetists have left. Nurses have left. Midwives have left. Critical care nurses have left. Other health professionals have left. 
These ones who are willing to stay and work for their country, should we let them also go? Because we said that because of the, of the policies that we had implemented, we will get to a point where we'll even have to import labor into this country. Mr. John Boydou said it to a whole crowd, and they were all happy. Everybody charged, and they were excited. The nurses are asking for jobs. And back in the day, if you went to teacher training college or you went to a nursing training school, by the time you were done, the jobs were there waiting for you. When did we reverse the trend that people go to school they specialize. They are nurses. And we know we need nurses. And we are allowing private hospitals to take advantage of these nurses. Because they throw anything at them and tell them, even your government cannot employ you. I am considering you to employ you. Take it or leave it. And the private facilities are taking advantage of them and woefully underpaying them. Where do they go? Where do they go? What is the essence of giving them allowances, padding the schools with numbers, huge numbers, telling them that teacher trainees are suffering, nursing trainees are suffering, and then when they finish, they can't find work to do. How do you explain this juju mathematics to me? How do you explain it? And when you talk about it, people say, oh, you are talking about negative news. What is negative? The person has gone to school, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, and you say that somebody is, is, is talking about negativity, put yourself in that person's shoe. If you had gone to school and you were trained as a net, and the more they stay at home, some don't even have private facilities where they go and work for them to be underpaid. So the more they stay at home, the more rusty they become. And every time they have to, they say they have to go and renew something they call their pin. They pay money for it. We put them through licensure exam. They pay. They have to go and renew their pin. They have to go and attend conferences and all of that and get credit for it. When the nurses speak to you and they start explaining their issues to you, you marvel. There are nurses who are serving at, in the military. Eh? They see their colleagues come, and their colleagues in the other units are promoted over and above them when they also are very well qualified to be promoted to those ranks. Some of them came to me here. So what is going on? Why don't we respect nurses and teachers particularly? Why don't we respect them in this country? Why do we take them for granted? You can argue that some of them have bad attitudes. You can argue. You can make that argument. You can go ahead and make that argument that some of them are unprofessional. You can. But if you have been to Kolebo and you have seen how some nurses leave and, and they themselves take their cars, going around other units to go and find oxygen to come and put on, on people, you will appreciate some of them. Sometimes at midnight, because me, some, some of the investigations I do, it's, we, we do a lot of things. Sometimes at midnight, you see two nurses walking briskly with an orderly. And you see, we ask them, where are you going? She says, well, we are going to look for oxygen to put on somebody. Why? Anyway, take me to parliament. You know that there's a conversation about four MPs who have gone independent. And yesterday when I was listening to the argument... Somebody suggested on the floor of parliament that, oh, this happened in the past. MP Formina, who is now deputy speaker, and Speaker Kwe ruled that his seat be declared vacant. And Jim Mensah, the electoral commission, said, ah, I, I support the speaker. Yesterday on the floor of the house, somebody conveniently said, the mistake of Speaker Kwe, the mistake of the past, should not, be, should not be repeated this time. It, then it was not a mistake. Now that is affecting somebody is a mistake. This is Harun Idrisu's uh, uh, memorandum. To the right honorable speaker. And then also um, is from Harun Idrisu, 15th October 2024. Notice of petition to you to declare vacant seats of four constituencies. I wish to notify you under Order 99 of the Standing Orders of Parliament on the need for you to declare vacant the seat of the following constituencies. Agona West, Sohum, Amenfi Central, and Fomina. 
um, I will be doing so under Order 18 of the Standing Orders of Parliament. Vacancy other than resignation of Article 97 1B to E, G and H of the Constitution. Um, the Speaker... Um, the Speaker shall inform the House of the occurrence of a vacancy of a seat of a member of uh, under clause 1, B to E, G and H of Article 97 of the Constitution duly submitted the 15th of October. Let's listen to the Speaker of Parliament, what he said after the arguments uh, and the debate had gone on. Listen to the Speaker of Parliament, what he said. The Speaker of Parliament of the Republic of Ghana, of the 8th Parliament, on a right honorable album bagman let's listen to the speaker of parliament and listen to what he said he said he needs time to give us a reasoned a reasoned ruling the speaker of parliament said that 48 hours or so so we are we are waiting mr speaker the whole world is watching we'll, we'll look for that and play that for you but my colleague komla kruche who is on uh, john mahama's team they were returning from the north and they saw something. Play the video for me. They saw a truck with a chamfan. And we all know what a chamfan is used for. Chamfan is used for illegal mining. There was a police checkpoint. Watch the video. Do you see the police checkpoints? Do you see the police vehicle? Did you see the police vehicle? Do you see the chamfang? Now there's a truck behind the chamfang. It's carrying a generator. And I've been asking the question that when we go to these Galamse sites and we say oh, we have taken military and police and we've given them guns and we are burning excavators, we are burning chamfang. Has anybody come to explain to you that at the Galamse sites there are also generators? Since we started this whole operation, Gallant Stop Operation, Vanguard Operation, Halt 1 and 2 Operation, whatever it is, has anybody come to declare that we went to this Galamse site and we picked up the generator? Has anybody come to tell you that we went to this Galamse site and we picked up this, these numbers of pump action guns or sidearms? Has anybody come to tell you that a Galamse site is like uh, a construction site? There's always a foreman who has a bag of cash. When the boys finish working, they pay them by day. Has anybody come to tell you that we go to a Galamse site, we arrest the people there, and they come and declare cash? Now, a Galamse site is where they are digging and looking for gold. Has any of the arrests come to tell you that we went to site A, we arrested the people, we found guns, we found mercury, we found uh, cyanide, we found money, we found uh, pump action guns, and then we found gold. Has anybody declared anything? It's always, we have burned this excavator, we have arrested two Chinese and 14 Ghanaian people, we are taking them to court. Nobody has declared any of the things, and there's a police checkpoint. And this is a chamfan with a generator. And you want to convince me, Johnny Hughes, that there's a fight against Galamse? <laughs> you must be joking. You must be joking. There's no fight against Galamse. I'm telling you. Who owns that chamfan? The truck, who owns it? The truck carrying the generator, who owns it? Watch, the, the, the LT bar, the Benz bus, it didn't even stop at the police checkpoint. It's work as usual, it's just going. They just stopped there, exchanged pleasantries, and they moved on. Where are they going, the Changfang? Where has it been taken to? The Changfang, this Changfang that you see on your screen, where is it going to? And it is crossing police checkpoint. And when you finish, you want to come and convince me that we have a serious government that is fighting Galamsey. We, we, don't, we are not fighting anything. We are dying together. Now the market women are making fun of the whole situation. Because there's a, an Adam's Ramsay uh, screenshot 
when we took the soldiers, he says, just after the armed forces embarked on a cleanup on the Birim River on Friday, 11th October, miners have gone back on the Birim River on the 14th, put it up, on the 14th of October 2024 at Eninem. And Eninem is where mining and illegal mining is happening right behind the police station. And the police, they, oh, it's only 800 meters away from us. And is that even a sensible answer to give? This man, Adam, he's been taking a lot of drone shots. He said, just after the armed forces embarked on a cleanup on the Birim River on Friday, 11th October, miners have gone back on the Birim River on the 14th of October, 2024, at Ininim. This was what Colonel Festus Abuaji said that is now, his character has now been assassinated. So the wisdom and, and experience that he spoke is not in, in necessary. I've had my share of character assassination and many other people who speak their mind in this country. And that is what they are doing to Colonel Festus Abuaji now. He said, if I had been in charge of this operation, I will first block the exit routes and then go on the attack, on the assault. Once I attack them, they will go towards the exit routes and I will pick a lot more people up. So when you go and the people run away, the people use the exit route, they will come back and this is the result. They have come back. So the work that you did is cost 90. And I say Major Maxwell Muhammad died for nothing. There is no fight against Galamse. The Galamseyers are the very people who say they are leading us to fight Galamse. And Kusiaga and Kobebiya. And Kobebiya, the market women are now making fun of the situation. Play the video for me. The market women, they are making fun of the situation, selling water. Galamse water. Play the video. <laughs> And we have muffled the voice so nobody goes to trace anybody. Uh, we know our country. We know the people who, who, who are in our country. We know the people. The women are making, and this could be the situation if we do not get up and act. That chamfan, that police on that checkpoint, and I'm sure the police, they know the people, they detail to that area. Where was the chamfan going? Why didn't they arrest the chamfan? Where was it going? You come and finish and write a long missive from the presidency. The evidence on the ground doesn't support the claim. The evidence on the ground doesn't support the claim that we are fighting Galamse. Take me to Georg. That's our last thing. Then we'll go away. Yesterday, I read something from the Ghana Revenue Authority written in 2023 that Georg owed millions of taxes that they had not paid. So I read to you, they wrote to the NIB bank and ask them that if you do not pay the money, because we know you are keeping money for Georg, if you don't pay the money, we will have to cite you in, in any court processes or any, you know, criminal, whatever that happens. That was a GRA letter. This letter dated 27th of April, 2023. The NIB received it on 9th May. The legal department, they received it at 12.30 p.m. on 9th May. The bank, they know what I'm talking about. Georg knows what I'm talking about. GRA knows what I'm talking about. This is an official document. Now, when this letter was occasioned by a Ghanaian Times report, put a reporter for me, where the minister for the SOEs, Mr. Kujo, had visited Georg and Mr. Kofi Juma had taken a very nice photo with him. This was on Monday, September 6, 2021. GRA wrote the letter in 2023 asking for the millions that they owed. That was because in 2021, this had been pushed into the narrative that plans to list Gihok on GSC under consideration as it makes 180 million profit. This was the publication in 2021. Now, when this publication came up and GRA started chasing Gihok and asking them to come and pay the relevant uh, taxes of this 180 million profit that they had made, Kofi Juma wrote a letter to GRA. Listen, he wrote this letter on September 9, 2021, to the Commissioner General Ghana Revenue Authority, Head Office, Accra. 
Listen, he said, Dear Sir, re misinformation of the progress of Gihok by the Ghanaian Times newspaper. We refer to the publication by the Ghanaian Times on Monday, 6 September 2021, on the progress of Gihok by the caption as it makes 180 million Ghana cities profitability, was wrongly miscommunicated by the newspaper. Between 2020 and 2021, Gihok's balance sheet had increased from 80 million to 180 million. This has come as a result of acquisition of new plant and re-evaluation of existing property, plant and equipment, and additions to the existing plant. However, this was captured by the Ghanaian Times Institute as profitability, and the sources has been directed to withdraw the misinformation and put up the correct information about Gihok. We write to the Ghana Revenue Authority not to take this information seriously as we have directed them to put up the right information. Attached is a copy of the wrong uh, capturing by the Ghanaian Times newspaper. This letter is written on behalf of Gihok. Yours faithfully, Maxwell Kofi Juma, Managing Director, copied to all of the people there. So this was in 2021. It, as a rebuttal to the Ghanaian Times story in 2021, that they had not made that profit. Find me the 2024 letter where Gihok is now admitting that they lied in 2021 to the Ghana Revenue Authority. Are we still arresting people for misinformation and disinformation and keeping them? I'm asking, I'm asking the people, are we still arresting people for misinformation and disinformation? Find me that letter. This is a letter dated 22nd of March, 2024. The Commissioner General, Ghana Revenue Authority, Accra. Attention, Mr. Edward Jamra. DSA, payment plan, Gihok Distilleries Company Limited. We write in reference of your letter dated 7 September 2023, with reference number GRA CGS DMCE 0923, for the payment of an amount of 231,952,066 Ghana CDs. Do you see the figure? Did you see the figure on the GRA letterhead? Kindly find below our payment plan for the settlement of the indebtedness. We will pay all our current maturing debts as and when they fall due. Two, we will transfer the sum of 500,000 CDs every month to the Ghana Revenue Authority as past payment of legacy debt. Legacy debt from where? The same letter that says that we don't owe, we didn't make such money. Three, attached to this letter are two checks totaling 666,785.78, representing both excise duty and VAT standard returns for October and November 2023, respectively. They are paying 2023 tax in 2024. Now, listen to the last one. In view of the above proposal, we humbly request that the Ganache order on the various bank accounts be revoked so payments can be effected in favor of GRA. I told you that Georg's accounts have been ganached. And I told you that now when their marketers sell, there's an account that they put their money in, Momo and Tins. And I told you that could have been the possibility where over 500,000 cities was taken by staff of Georg who were arrested on the 25th of September. And they were billed that same day. They went to go and beg. And who are they? So Georg here is telling us that what they told us in 2021, they told GRE that we have not made such profits. They lied. Because they say, in view of this, we are humbly, why did the legacy there, where did they come from? The legacy, Yoko, I'm greeting you again. Go to Gihok. Madam Tiwa, if you don't go to Gihok, then I know that you are also involved in this rot. Go to Gihok, go to Gihok. Madam Tiwa, go to Gihok. I have showed you proof. And this one, I'm not talking, these are official letters from Gihok. This was received on the 21st of March, 27th of March, 2024. 2024, this is the uh, 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 Richmond Sam Kwam, financial controller of Gihok. He wrote this. He said, our accounts have been gonna share that all the accounts, they have been frozen. I know good people who used to work at Gihok who have left. Gihok, when you go to Gihok, baby mama has plenty. Somebody, somebody's even angry that somebody who worked there is, has gone to give birth, has a husband, and the matter is before Labor Commission. And, and, and Georg now postpones the date to appear, and they don't appear. 
Tomorrow, I'll give you another juice on Gihok. Let's do the Kofi Odro prayer. That's our closing him. Play the video for me. Kofi Odro's prayer. His prayer for Galamseyes. And please call me 055-924-2717 and 055-691-0154. Prophet Kofi Odro, he has a video. He says, all the Galamseyes, God will kill you. And that prayer is a very important prayer. All the Galamseyes, God will kill you. I have a little announcement for all Galamseyes. God will kill you. Bring the scripture. I'm quoting the scripture. God will kill you. 